everyone, my name is Laura and this is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to a spring themed video. So today I'm going to be giving you some recommendations as well as a couple books that I haven't read yet but are just kind of spring vibes. If you are interested in what I will be reading this spring, I have already posted my spring TBR and I'll have it linked up above, I believe it's over here, <laughs> um, for you to check out. But yeah, so this video is going to have two books that I haven't read yet and the rest of them are all going to be recommendations that I have read. To me, spring is a very natural season. It's the season where everything is blooming and regrowing and kind of going through this rebirth. So a lot of these recommendations are either going to be for their bright colors or the nature themes because those are just kind of the two main aspects of spring. Like those are the spring vibes. It's the bright pastel colors and the nature and the growth. So that's what most of these books are going to be recommended on. So. If you find one, I hope you find one that you enjoy. The first of the two books is one that so many people have been talking about. I've already talked about it quite a bit this year. Once I finish my current read, this is the next book that I'm going to, and that is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. Look at this cover. Look at how gorgeous it is. I always make you stop and look at this cover whenever I put it in a video. But this gives me spring vibes with the nature and with the colors. It's a Korean mythology story and it is about a girl who her village is terrorized by these storms and tsunamis and whatnot. And so every year her village has been sacrificing a young woman to go and be the bride for the god of the sea, hoping that one year they will find his true bride. And then this year, our main character's brother's true love is going to be sacrificed. So instead, our main character sacrifices herself to save her brother and her brother's love, which is so sweet. And she actually discovers that the uh, sea god is actually not angry or lonely. He is, in fact, asleep. So she must journey through the spirit world to figure out how to wake him up. Like This just seems like such a fun beautiful adventure story like this is a story that is going to be a work of art and it's going to give off perfect spring vibes I just I feel like that is what is going to happen so many people have been loving this book so I really cannot wait to get to this and then the second book that I haven't read yet is actually one that just came this morning legit I unboxed this like an hour ago and so I am super excited to have it. I'm really excited to film my next haul, but that won't be for a couple months. So this, you're gonna see it now, but then you might not see it until I read it or until I actually haul it in a video. Um, the reason it took me so long to get this though was because I really wanted the UK cover rather than the American cover because UK cover is spring vibes. Ready, ready? Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I loved Elizabeth Lim's duology of uh, the blood and the blood of the stars. I love that duology. It was absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. And so when this book was coming out, I knew I had to pick it up. And I saw the American cover, and I thought, oh yeah, that's a really nice cover. And then I saw the UK cover, and I went, that's the cover that I want. That is the cover that I need on this shelf. So honestly, I feel like. Once I rearrange my shelves when I move into our temporary library, stay tuned for that video. If you want to hear more updates about that, go ahead and subscribe now. But these will be both books that I will want to like have facing forward. I don't want them, I don't want them sideways because I want the covers to be seen constantly. So this is definitely, I mean, like it's, it's again, it's the pastel light colors, it's got a little bit of floral detailing. Oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. I haven't really like sat down and stared at it yet. I am just so ready. Okay, I'm done geeking out. So, <laughs> so this book, I believe is based off of a Chinese mythology myth and it follows a girl who has magic and she is not supposed to. I think she's about to get married when her mother, stepmother, one of those, <laughs> um, learns that she has this illegal magic and kind of threatens her. She turned all of her brother into cranes and if she were to speak a word, then one of her brothers will die. And there's something about a bowl being put on her head too. 
I, I don't know what that's about, but I'm really excited to find out. So this is another book that uh, I think is just going to give me spring vibes. Again, just like with this beautiful adventure and this work of art, especially after reading the duology by Elizabeth Lim, I know her writing is just beautiful. And poetic and beautiful writing, again, is such a spring thing for me. So I am belatedly adding this to my spring TBR. And let me know if this really is a good spring read. I think it will be, but we'll see. Then the next book I'm going to talk about, I'm pretty sure I recommended it last year. So I am going to recommend it again this year, but I promise I'll stop next year. I won't recommend it for spring next year, I promise. Uh, but I still have to though. Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashardust. Some people love this and some people hate it, and I can completely understand why. I ended up loving it. Our main character, uh, she is like poisonous to the touch. Um, so whatever she touches kill dies except for plants. So she very much loves gardening and being with plants as they are the only living things that don't die. Um, so there's kind of that nature aspect to it and the cover is just beautiful. Like it's just one of those books where I want to be reading it with the cover and I want to be seen because it's just spring vibes. It's like a Sleeping Beauty retelling but she is locked away because of her powers not because she is asleep. And then there's this whole political backdrop going on which I didn't hate even though I normally don't like strong political fantasies. I actually very much enjoyed this one. I loved our main character, the romance. Oh, so last time I'm recommending this but seriously if you haven't given it a read and you're looking for a spring fantasy vibe, I seriously recommend trying this out. And yes, once you start it and you think, oh, this twist is coming, this twist is coming, and then, and then it comes, but there's so much more after it that it's okay, okay? <sighs> Trust me. And then the last fantasy that I'm going to recommend is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. Rachel Griffin actually has another book coming out later this year that I'm also really excited for. I'm sure you can tell why I'm recommending this one. It's literally called The Nature of Witches. Every witch is born to a specific season and that is how her power or his power um, is shaped. It's all about, you know, what season influences your magic. And so this is a book that I would always recommend during a change of season. It's just every season, the, the vibes and the aesthetic and the atmosphere changes really well. And I believe spring is kind of near the second half. I think we start in like fall. So it'll take a little bit to get to spring, but then you kind of end on like a spring summer and then you end up with spring vibes and you feel ready for the warm weather. Like seriously though. And especially in like, I don't know how it is where you live, but right now the day is beautiful and it is warm, but it's also supposed to snow in two days. So it's a good one to read for right now when you're like kind of balancing between it's cold outside and it's sunny and the days are getting longer so it feels more like spring. So this is one I would recommend to pick up during the change of seasons. Now I've got two books that I don't own that are a little more on the contemporary and contemporary romance side of things. So the first off I'm going to recommend Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean. I actually have an impromptu reading vlog of this that I will have linked up above. Uh, because I started reading it and I realized it was a book that I just needed to vlog my experience. I loved it so much. It was so much fun to read it. I read it so quickly. Um, but this one gives me spring vibes. It is very much like The Princess Diaries, but in its own right. So there is a Japanese American girl who learns that her father is actually the crown prince of Japan. And so she decides to go to Japan to meet her family and kind of learn that side of her family and not just who she is on her mom's side and so she then becomes pretty much the crown princess and travels through Japan and learns so much about Japanese culture and it was just beautiful. It was a beautifully written story. The cover is slightly springy. Also there is the sequel coming out to this later this year or just came out, something like that. So. I'm very excited for that one as well and it just was a beautiful story. It's not really season specific or like the story itself isn't super springy but I don't know there's just something about it like the self-discovery almost kind of rebirth into the new person she has become that kind of makes me think of spring and think it's a good time to read it. 
And then the other contemporary is Love and Luck, and this is by Jenna Evans Welsh. This is one that it really hooks you at the very beginning. So it is about this girl who just went through this hard time and she and, and she's in Ireland for some wedding and instead of going on this whole like honeymoon trip thing that she's supposed to do, she and her brother and her brother's friend end up doing this tour of Ireland focused on helping you move through your grief. So again, it's another story of growth and rebirth and that those are kind of the elements of spring that very much in capture and of course Ireland you know in this season it's like warm but not really and it's pretty rainy so I I would say if you haven't picked up any of these books you should definitely do so there are a couple other companion novels about it there's like Love and Olives and Love and Gelato I have not read those yet but if you read any of those you should try Love and Luck and then the final book that I'm going to recommend is completely different than all of these I have just one book in this category and this is your horror thriller category. So Spring fling Ween is coming up at the end of April and I'm really excited to participate in that. I need to do some hunting and there really aren't a lot of like horror thriller novels that I think are super springy but if you are a horror thriller reader I did want to throw in this recommendation for you and that is House of Hollow. This again because of the nature vibes I loved this book. I absolutely adored it and I'm not a super experienced thriller horror reader but I loved this. So obviously the cover is springy because of all the flowers and the colors. I love how the colors are like muted so it's not, so it still gives it that eerie vibe but it's still springy because you know she's got flowers all along her face. But in this one with the dead bodies there are flowers growing and the flower is a huge symbol in this book and so that's kind of why it gives me like a spring horror vibe. Um, because there is a really cool element of nature in with this and I don't want to say too much about it other than you know the main premise of these three sisters they disappear they come back and they're they look a little different and they act different but they're back and then all of a sudden the older sister goes and disappears again so her younger sisters are trying to find her and figure out what happened to them way back when when they just went missing because they don't even remember. This was such a fun spooky one to read. If you haven't read it yet and you don't want to wait until spooky season, I would say spring is the next best time to pick this up. And if you need one for Spring fling a -ween, I have, I don't remember what the prompts are, <laughs> so I don't know if this would actually fit any of the prompts, but still. And it's not too long, like you can easily read it in a weekend with another book or two. Like, it just had me gripped the whole time. Anyway, those are all my recommendations. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Otherwise, go ahead and subscribe because I make videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. I have a bunch of bookish social media linked down below where you can keep up with what I'm reading, how I'm feeling, and you can also recommend to me some of your favorite books as I will follow you back. Comment down below any spring recommendations you have for me. I'm always looking for good recommendations from you guys or what gives you spring vibes when you read a book. Is it poetic writing? Is it colors on the cover? Is it nature themes? Is it character growth, personal growth, spring cleaning? Anyone? <laughs> so until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.